Hello and welcome to another thrilling episode of The Constituency. And guess where we are today? Well, we are in the Esojaman Constituency. My name is Samuel Akom and this is The Constituency. The Eswojaman constituency is located within the Akrapim North District in the Eastern Region with its capital as Atimpoku. The ethnic groupings are primarily Ewe, followed by Akan, Guan, and Gaadangwe. Popular communities include Didokope, Atimpoku, Abume, Akosombo, Savey Line, Adome, Doji, Asantikrom, Esukuma, Mpakadan, and Senchi Ferry. Economic activities predominant in the constituency include trade, fish farming, farming, hospitality business, among others. The constituency boasts of some major tourist attractions, including the Adome Bridge, Akosumbo Dam, Senchi Ferry, hotels, and resorts. The Esojaman constituency has 59,000. 977 number of voters and 145 polling stations according to electoral commission data used for the 2020 general elections. The constituency has 37 electoral areas, namely New Akrade, Senchi, South Senchi, Budukrom, Atimpoku, Manguase, Akwemufie, Akosomo Textiles Limited, Akosombo, Loa Asukwao, Chiaso, New Combine Akosombo, Pupuni, Community One, Nundu Abwasa, Apeguso, Anyansu, Mpakadan, Mogaji, Didetka, Finte, Osiabura, Esikuma, Labolabo, New Doji, New Inkwakubel, Amonda, Amanfro, Apenkwa, Tosenanyo, Oduaso, Cheche, Anyase, Jekiti, Edumsa, Ajina East, Pese, Nyeniema, Ajina Dono. The Esojaman constituency is not only rich in cultural heritage and tourism, but also has a scintillating political history. According to Channel One Research Unit, the National Democratic Congress has consistently won all presidential elections from year 2008 to 2020. The presidential election result has it that in year 2008, the NDC's candidate John Evans Tamils won the constituency after garnering 17,363 and representing 53%. His opponent, Nana Akofuado of the NPP, received 15,017, which represents 46%. The victory margin for the NDC over the NPP in that year was 7%. In 2012, the NDC presented John Mahama as the candidate who polled 21,777, representing 54%. The NPP's candidate, Nana Akofuado, also polled 18,110, representing 45%. John Mahama of the NDC won the election with a 9% victory margin. The 2016 election further saw an NDC victory in the Sujaman constituency with their candidate John Mahama polling 19,925 which represents 51% of the valid vote cast. His opponent Nana Akofuado polled 19,055 representing 48%. The victory margin was pegged at 3%, which is a decrease from the 2012 margin, which was 9%. In the 2020 general elections, NDC's John Mahama received 24,470, representing 52% of the total vote cast. The NPP's candidate, Nana Akufuado, polled 22,232, representing 47%. This shows that the NDC won the election in the Esujaman constituency with a 5% victory margin in the year 2020. Analyzing the trend from 2008, it is clear that in terms of presidential elections, the NDC has won the Esujaman constituency consecutively since year 2008. 
Also, the closest the NPP came in winning the constituency for presidential election was year 2016, where the NDC's victory margin was 3%. The election result for parliamentary elections over the years for a Sojourman constituency has it that, in 2008, the NDC presented Joseph Asari Akoto, who polled 16,608, representing 51%. The NPP, on the other hand, presented Kofi Osei Ameyal, who polled 15,473, representing 48%. The election saw a victory of the NDC's Joseph Asari Akoto. In 2012, both political parties maintained the candidate for the 2008 elections. At the end of polls, the NDC's Joseph Asari Akoto polled 18,650, representing 47%. His opponent, Kofi Osei Ameyao of the NPP, received 20,750, representing 52%. NPP's Kofi Osei Ameyao thus won the election with a 5% victory margin. In 2016, power changed hands again from the NPP to the NDC. Both political parties presented new faces to contest. The NPP presented Kwame Edu Dakwa, who polled 18,668, representing 47%. The NDC also presented Thomas Ampimnyaku, who polled 20,493, representing 52%. Consequently, the NDC's Thomas Nyaku won the election with a 5% margin. This margin was the same margin the NPP's 2012 candidate won the 2012 parliamentary election with. The 2020 elections was keenly contested as the NDC maintained the incumbent MP as their candidate while the NPP brought a new phase once again. The NDC's Thomas Ampimnyako, the incumbent MP, garnered 24,439, representing 51%. The NPP's candidate, Paul Asari Ansa, garnered 23,201, representing 49%. The NDC's candidate won the election with a mere 2% margin. Gleaning from the data, the NPP since 2008 has won the Esojaman constituency once, while the NDC has won it three times. Also, Thomas Ampimnyako has been the only candidate who has won the constituency consecutively in year 2016 and year 2020. In the 2024 general election, the NDC's candidate and incumbent MP Thomas Ampimnyako faces a stiff competition as the NPP's Pius Enam Hadide battles to win the seat. We will start off today's episode right from the Akwemufie Palace uh, for us to get to appreciate the historical precedence of this particular constituency. How did the name Eswojaman come about and why is it Eswojaman and uh, what is the makeup of this particular constituency? Let's get to the palace to get an elderly person to give us this history for you to get to appreciate what uh, the constituency is about and how unique it is. This is still the constituency. For you to get to appreciate the makeup and history of the Esojaman constituency, uh, we have visited Nana Jan Odro Dapa II. Uh, he is the Akwemu Asebo Hene and Adonte Hene of uh, Sinchi uh, to get a bit of history of this uh, particular constituency. Let's move to him to have a conversation. Um, as we begin the conversation, we want to find out um, what has been the history of this particular constituency. When we say Eswe Jaman, what does it mean? Eswe Jaman literally means over bank. Uh -huh the country or the state over bank, uh, over the banks of the river. Uh, but it used to be the Kauga district, yeah, which was falling in the Krobo land. It was part of the, the couched, the Sujaman 
people into the Krobo people, that is Oduma Sembi, and it became one district. That was called the Kaoga district. Then later on, it, it turned to be Akwamu Enumboso district. Yeah. And then finally, we are now here, a Sujaman district, meaning the state overbank. Yeah. So, in order for us to get to appreciate the full history, which people live here? When we talk of Sujaman, what is the people make up here? The people living here, as per every state or every town, you know, we have various uh, categories of people, but the, mainly the indigenous of uh, Suijaman district are the Aquamus, the Enums, and then the Bosos. The Enum and the Bosos are Guans, but the Aquamus are the Aquamus, and we, we don't share anything with anybody. Aquamu is Aquamu. If you, if you know the Ghana history, you appreciate what Aquamu has done. Yeah, in Ghana history. So it means that the major language spoken here is the Akwemu language, is that correct? Yes, the major language spoken is the Akwemu language. And it is what people call a Kuyapim tree. Oh. Yeah. The, the actual language is Akwemu, Akwemu language. But because uh, the Akwemus left the, the Guans, that is the Kuyapims, at the mountains, then they migrated here. The Aquapims learned the language from the Aquamus. And then when the missionaries came, the Basel missions came, you know, they, they sojourned in uh, the Aquapim areas. And then hearing the language, they used it in writing the Bible, and then they named it Aquapim tree. But the actual language is the Aquamu language. So now that we know the people who live here and uh, the languages, aside, aside the Aquamu language, which other languages are spoken here? I understand Ewe is also spoken. Yeah, Ewe is spoken here because we have a lot of them here. You know, we share common boundaries with them. So they are here. They, so Ewe is spoken here. A little Krobo is also spoken here. Yeah. So now when you talk of Esu, Jaman, what's, what, is no, what are you known for? I mean, what key things can we locate within the constituency, Esu Jaman constituency? Esu Jaman is a tourist hub. You can, there are a lot of tourist attractions here. Mm, we have a lot of uh, hotels, resorts, they, you can name them the the, the famous Royal Sinji Hotel is situated here. We have the Akosumbo Dam, the Akosumbo Township, and then other very beautiful uh, places. We have the uh, Afrikiko Beach Resort. Now, we cannot end the conversation without getting to know some of the uh, key challenges you face here where in this particular constituency that you think that attention needs to be paid to. Would you want to highlight one or two of them? Seriously, I think that we have not been dealt with fairly. Yeah. You know, taking into consideration what we provide uh, for the nation, uh, especially the dam, and then the market, no, this market supplies yam to Tema, Kumase, name them, name the places. But we are left you no know, unconcerned. We we our roads are not good. When it comes to electricity, for instance, the bills that we pay is so exorbitant. You understand? Uh, imagine if this dam was built in another uh, region. I think that power would have been free for all, for the people here. But the amount of you know, power uh, rate that we pay is too high. It is too exorbitant. The constants where power is actually being generated. Yes. Your, your, your Our bills are so high. And then again, you know, to, in order to sustain the lifespan of the bridge, I will suggest that 
a, a ferry, one of the ferries that were that, that was taking here that were taking here should be brought back to ply the the river so that the bigger you know trucks up to a certain tonnage can you know use the the ferry in order to expand the the lifespan yeah of the the bridge because it takes a lot of money to you know rehabilitate the bridge so if one ferry is at least brought back on the river and it cuts the bigger trucks the lifespan of the bridge will, ex will be expanded more yeah, than probably it will be as at now. This is still the constituency on Channel One Television, and we are currently at the Senchi Market, uh, one of the economic drivers of the constituency. And this market is known for tomatoes, plantain, and yam because uh, traders from Accra visit this market to get yam in bulk. And so we'll go and interact with traders uh, to find out how uh, business has been for them as well as have interactions ahead of the 2024 general elections. Let's take a walk. Madam H. I was saying. We bought your me who ye? Who ye? If I say I find it out, I wear them out on by you. We bought your me tom by her. I walk off our hand, yeah, dear. We bought your ear, almost free, no for her bray or hat. Can't sound my mimbis, I did them all at the same. Jadian when ye crack, 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 and I buy any bones to ye din my eh. And say my eh, you say any ton ye din, nippany bar. First, nippany bar to me to buy the hundred cities. But say oba, say na ni boy edin ti oba to ba kupe na oko. Nti joade ne emu ye di man. Ma min bi sa o kanisa no o constituency mo ha se no. Um or how ben for for na side business na o si en ko ye no how ben for for na wo mu a o be person ka o be ka ho asem. Wo ye ha wo market ha. Market ha na constituency ne mo. Oh. Aye si ka sem na bra. Ti ka de bia mu aye tof. Mi nu ya. Ti ka sem na. Ti na ka mu pepe se be si aban be timi aye abo amu. Oh, so na ye ye ra ma ha ma kai. O tu mi bam na o be ye ma ya, ai be boye. So na o si o be ma ye loan. O mu ye jwadi for o be ma ye loan na. O tu mi ba. E tu mi foti ma na o ba na o be ye ma ye pa, e be boye. O be bo bia. Mm. What kind of say is a material in commodity and what about one over two? Oh, metu. Yeah, now oh, shame himself to my Oh, metu, my hammer. Oh, I did this on no bebo. Oh, bebo. No bebo. So, oh, you're riding to bebo. Wow, Rishimu. So, after the conversation, uh, she is basically saying that her major challenge here within the market is uh, the cost of the yam. That is the wholesale price because the prices have increased and they do not get customers. When customers come and they mention the prices to them, initially they would have ordinarily bought two or three, but when they come because of uh, the pricing, uh, they purchase just one, which is uh, making her get losses. And she also mentions that in terms of the 2024 general elections, she believes that former president and flag bearer for the NDC, John Dramani Mahama, is the one she is voting for because of the policy seeking to the policy proposal that seeks to give soft loans to traders and all. So that is what she is saying. See, Mr. Nefro saying. Nefro is Martha. Martha. Martha Abede. Martha Boafo. Martha Boafo. But what are you doing with her? I'm going to get a crowd. To see it is saying, price is not saying. Price in the ten day I cost you. And you know, when put a mobile beer, I would say constituency has say, Oh, how better? Oh, one can't be a buying beer and a way home with you. Oh, how did they blue? See, but we'll be trying. I said, Yeah, and yes, a kind of teacher, I know you're near Deca. And to any day, more a cabbage or how no cabbage. 
How do you be? As a casem so a hydrin in a juma sem and say juma or hoa. Sikan beba, be juma soon new ho. Tia mana be be a bassa. It were a real mohon. And tia per se a juma mla mo. Na yentiminas can yen fancy a man. Yen crunum soon ye juma ye. One fan share. The about to buy baby. Momo who is now president. Now Momo who is now who share. No Mr. Roberto Abanaman. Oh, me me the affair. Momo the me as I'm into a bam. Didn't ya? Can we be sure? Didn't now say onto. As I say about to no. Eh, I say. Eh, ebi no mi ya didi. Ebi no mi ya ebi no mi ya nyashi. Ya nyashi. E vote kwa e vote kwa. Inti misi affair. Di mi vote. Amela Yechao. Good afternoon. Afternoon. Let's say. Patrol young here. I'm here to. Um, person me bisa. Aye, I oba jamu ha. Oba ede. Oto wa di ana oba toa di. Oh, me be toa di a koto. Na zisi a di niyamani di. Niyamano emu yedim pa 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 pa. Zisi a di sena niyamano kani di. Eni eni oba kona ya tusu. Ochina a di chin de biya zisi a sa. Ama zisi a yendi min toa shu 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 shu. Say business. Say business. Endi min kanda dao. Dia uba unimnya uoto, basi si ano emu nye emu nye uba beto adino one city na odi beto so tese na bis we friend bisi si si ano bis na mbaba beto yu tese bis ni bua edin otono wahano mo ebi ohono mo friend is imagine no aye fifteen cities na sa fifteen cities ino ahina mi mi beto ame kwa kotono. Or chichi no fifteen cities. Inti chichi no ababe chichi or chichi ramu meno. Mi mi kotono sixteen cities. Inti sa sixteen cities. One city ne waso. Unkola be kusku. Wa ube didi wom. Ube numu so. Akola tare titi. Enye bibia ne be ma beti mi ayamu. Inti manu su yensu ya bwa me manu bebre. Inti no one akola no waho. Inti no se akola no kusku ne nisku ataleti anase nimbobati. Enye ferry ma wuma meno. Inti no aba sana eti anu si adi. O mani diye, enko ye kura, ene mi nkan dada, enko ye bako, 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 bako. Mimi jina wei, mimi si, mimi ntu aba. Mimi ntu aba biya, because mimi hun faso biya menya. Miko tu aba nukura menya mfa so biya waso. Mi bre, ne nwa na me bre. Bibiya anti mi sisa waje. Bibiya ni honu mebe sisa maadwe. Bibiya mamu diya ye di. Ena ye honu mwono ye, zongo mwono, ati mpoku polis te eshi, zongo unumu. Ena ye edeng, mimi wo, miko zongo, mimi dindi lad. Ebu kwa hana amuti mi frame zina, ehe, enti nu hana huna sio yenyia toilet, toilet, wakwa bano si toilet dina, baby ni huna mwa, obe obe fa, obe kwa, afedha ukrapwa hii step ama huna, ena zungu numa kasa kasa nu, unsuo unsuo wakana muna unsuo, kwa wazo ni intirama, yenti mi yade, amu yenti mi biapa pepe nama yenyade, yenye yenye sa unsuo nu, inti hasa na emu odi, emu odi paminka. Pachwa FM Fati. Fati. Pachwa. Me unse u bubu mo kobi ano ni adi adi. Oye de waha. Me to me ko. Eni a bedu. Me ko fresh na zese ni bo e de papa. Ni bo e nye de. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ni bo e nye de. Be e pro. E se. Because of the chemicals they been using. Mm-hmm. I say so. Oha ubi e waha ube pese ube boso. Mm-hmm. Insyo ba e ni a pata. And my umbrella cry, you say, I at a high. And one, no, and she says, and she is so new to her. Yeah, at the tone of coffin, a month me to her, they just all punk of you. About to obey, what do you know? Saying about one, ah, one would not for my penny. Oh, be as a matter of zoom. Hey, me dear, me did it because I said, yeah, my mom, why did you know? Okay, it's the same one. Mm -hmm. It's the same one. 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 It's the same I want a full for no more. And Sana, yet Tony, we are now a good yaka. The first I end this was sooner than almost yet me talk to yaka. 
no, no, no. Now, what are for MPs? Uh, yeah, um, Pius, any current MP? No. Or Momo, why are you sharing this with someone? The pen is in no. The pen is in no. It's good. I'm the market. No matter how dusty. It's the pen. No, I'm going back. I'm going to be Papa. Yo, na if you say the Francis Francisca 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 Bede into into okay na um I I just want to say twenty CD I'm going you and touch it I just want to say Papa na insi onu so haye into eto a inya baby a umbrella onu so haya. Nobody <laughs> At the town, shut down your papa. You also want to scan a campaign. It's your mother, turn your papa. And your papa. Who name that? Who name that? Sensei. Twenty CD. Me or twenty thirty. First name, say. And as you say, oh, we bought ten CD five. We say, we say, first name, say. We in Kavata five CD. And as you say, twenty. Eh, it's sensei. Bibi, I can't name him. You know, um, or more more general for president, and almost some can't hear the day. The mood you're hearing at all, as soon as we share the music, we'll be to a man who's here, be boy, or the Tony. It's a sad party, and Nipa party, I want to be my way into Yenyame. It's a media Yame, I'm a shell, Yenipa, because we'll be a bar or Jenna, then a bush and for whom I didn't yammy a bit me a boy. Oh, I banned the met to send you do her match and my green. Ba nyame nyame ne hene nti ade nyina mu nyame na odi kan wo bibie mu Yo madam ne se pa cho nyame adum nti no ejuma sem mu te sen eh nyame adum en sheda Koye sabat ye gusu aye ye. Koye ana dinti na wakasa. Eh, sana sana si a feed ni boye din. Inti we don't have customers to buy the the fish like that. Yes, because every day the fish price increase, and they are also facing problem for that. Yes, so sometimes it's very difficult. Just this week the fish has been increased again. Yes. In the fish prices. Yes, the fish price has been increased again. So if it happens like that, it's we we face a lot of challenges. Yes, because the buyers also complain, but we also don't have any option. Yes. The next challenge, it's natural. Yes, because it's a disease from the lake. Yes. Uh, sometimes you have bacteria and things that do worry the fish, and they do die of it. Yeah, so that one is natural. It comes time. It, it, from time to time. Yes, from time to time. What are you expecting the government to do to help you uh, in, in your cause of work? Yeah, we want the government to help in our f uh, feed, in the fish feed. Yes, because we, I don't know how. I don't know how best the government can help us, but we really need the help from the government because the feed is costing too much. Yes, and it's affecting the business. Yes. Are you are you going to vote in the election? Yeah. Which policy have you heard that interests you so much and you think can help you? Uh, for that one, I can't say it's not, yeah. It's my personal decision. Not not whom you are voting for, but which policy resonates well with you? Policy Ben at Towasum. Maybe we are all saying that maybe if NDC come into power, things will be okay. Oh, yeah, and I'm who you money are there. Then put in our way. Oh, me, the major, my baby, me operator, Miss I, a chief fingerless. They call me Susumia, Nate, to wage my. They join the Nina, me won't be. Man of many colors. Everything. 
everything some. And so, what kind of sad? I mean, this a um a banner we do my year be bringing our whole body in here. You know, the challenges we face and our face and can we share any more? So, I'm beating me about. Oh, challenge I'm facing is that the person can ban a ban boy. He ain't fish for no. He said, "No, you do my work." He said, "He said, me say no, man, cook cook papa bia." And to fish, you do my na mini. Aha. And to no, he said, "Ban some more boy." He said, "Yeah, he fish, you do my no. No boy, you feed him so. Feed him a problem. Say feed. Boy, he didn't. No boy, he didn't. Feed him no boy, he didn't. Papa, papa. And to ma, we are better. Namne ma, na yin se ni ebi no. We are mumba. He said, "Feed him no coffee and pet. Namne so. Be coffee mama yin. Na we are better no so." I'm a better man. Now, better to be police is better to us. Uma, I don't see no urgency. Eh, be bo amu amu ye. Eh, nam hui juma ni adi. Eh, this year ni di. Aban biya bako. Yefe si aban eh ubiya ni program. Ba mi mi se di mi M P P. Eh, mi M P P. Nti mi jizi se se M P P sa ba bako biya. This is still the constituency on Channel One Television. Let's take a reader here. When we return, we will be engaging some drivers to have conversations with regards to their livelihoods as well as conversations ahead of the 2024 general elections. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Hello and welcome back to the constituency. We are currently at the Akosumbo station. We are going to engage some drivers. You remember in previous episodes, drivers have been complaining of the fuel prices as well as prices for spare parts, making their work difficult. And so will the drivers here sing the same song, we'll have to engage them to find out. So we are still within the main Akosumbo station and I have some drivers here we'll be interacting with. But let me start off with the chairman. Um, in your course of work, yeah. what challenges are you faced with? Okay. As for challenges, I say our main problem is a fuel. That's the main target that I can talk about. It's a fuel. The fuel is something that is disturbing our business. Anytime the drivers bought a fuel, they complain. You know, it's all over the, across the country. I mean, also just across the world alone. That is our main challenge. But uh, if you come to the road network also, I may say that we thank VRA for the road network because they are controlling the township. It is like uh, how the Tama is, like they are dif different. A we are AMC, Tama is AM or AMT or so, something like that. If I'm not being TMA, sorry, so sorry, thank you for correction. So we are under AMC. So if you see most of our cars, they run AMC, AMC. That, that remains a coastal management committee. So for the township, they took control of it. But we have uh, some feeder route. That place we call it Jakiti, Ajina Jakiti. That's where we are getting a challenge from. Because the road network over there is not good. For the past seven years, there's no work done on the road. So we come to a point, some of the drivers will load from here, then they do transit because they can't go to the other side. They can't continue because of the state of the road. So they will park over there, then the other vehicle from that, that place and come in to the passenger and brought it there. So it is that challenge that we are having here. The Akosumbo is a town that uh, I think I can say we have we are very peaceful over here. Because as you are watching this small station, we have a five union over here. But we, we live in peace. You know, I'm 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 a Akosumbo cooperative chairman. But you may see Protoa Secretary over here. You may see GPR, GPRT also secretary here. So we live as a family because as actually we all um, commercial driver before. As I'm I started as a taxi. Then I come to commercial before long distance. So once we know each other before the union came. So whatever we do, we do everything as a one family. So that's what I can talk about. Right. Let, let, let me find out from you as well. They have spoken about the road and all, right? In terms of um, spare parts, uh, when, when a part of your car gets pulse and you want to uh, refurbish that, right? What is the pricing like? Thank you so much. Um, you see, one of the challenges we are facing as drivers is that uh, the spare parts now is very, very expensive because um, about um, seven years ago, you can get a shock around 70 cities, but now it's around 600,000, 1,005. So you can see that even though we are working, but we have nothing to save. So it's like hand to mouth. 
In those days, you can see a driver owning a car, but now it is difficult to even do a campaign. So that is the most important. I think that if everything can come down and the duty can come down so that we, the drivers, too, can purchase the spare pass, I will be happy about it. Right. In the 2024 elections, which of the candidates or policies have you heard that will help you? So you are looking at considering that uh, party or candidate? For me, actually, I may say that I told you I'm not a politician, but all the time on the TV. I'm watching. Once I came to the office, you see that I'm on the foreign news. So I changed all the stations. So the policy, the policy that I mean, it attracts me. It's a professor, JJ, uh, J, uh, professor Harry College, JJ uh, Nana Opoku Ajaman. Opoku, Opoku Ajaman. You mean the, the, the running mate to John Dramanima? John Mahama. The policy that attracts me because when you see the way the trans transition is going, and uh, he is ready to, I mean, bring down some transition. So how about you? Uh, he's saying that in terms of policies, the policies that have been released by the various political parties and candidates, what attracts him the most is um, the policy proposal by the running mate of uh, the um, flag bearer for the NDC, John Dramani Mahama, uh, to abolish some of these taxes. What do you also have to say? What policy resonates well with you? Okay, first of all, me, I'm um, MPP supporter. And my, I support what policy my government is bringing. Something like Habaumia going around and telling us about digitalization. So I know that if that sort of thing happens, things will go down for us. And my pleading is our uh, tax, income tax. First, some years ago, we paid even less than four, four, 40 cities. And now it is 700, 600. Because of that, most of us, we are dodging from paying the, the tax. And if we know that it comes down a bit, most of us can afford it. So we are pleading to them that they should do something better for that. Mm. So to say, I think that the 24 hours economy is one of the best things that can. Why do you say so? It's because, you see, now the employment situation in Ghana is so, so tough. People finish school. All of us here, we are graduates, but because there's no job. And then we have to start doing all these things. So I think that 24-hour economy will help because at the moment, uh, three people can go to the same work at the same time in a shift. And if the government can do that policy very well, I think that the um, employment issues will reduce drastically in Ghana. Do you have something to say as well? Uh, I want to say uh, congratulations. In any the conversation, uh, your constituency, uh, which of the candidates uh, you know, are you looking at, uh, considering, listening to their policies and the things they've done in the past and all of that? Actually, for me, I will, I will go in for our MPs. The current MP. The current MP. Yeah, because it's somebody that, you know, is very humble. Uh, I look at the nature of the person before I go for the ballot. He's very, very humble. Happy. Honorable happy. I was very, very humble. Okay. So, so you are voting for him because you, because of his humility? Yeah, I'll make sure my driver also go vote for him because the man is very humble. We have uh, some tents over here. It, um, unfortunately, we do not put it on the uh, vertically. The such a canopy. He, provide, the, he provided us a canopy, two. Wow. Now, he, he, he promised to that, that he will bring the other one so that we put it here as a canopy. So he give us a canopy, two. Promise us that by next week we will bring the other one making three. You know, we have a three taxi section over here. Yeah, and if you can see from here to here, the one who do this, this, this shed for us. Yeah, and the other one I by that, did by the VNR for some years back. So for me, I will go for him. Uh, yeah. okay. All right. Listen to the people on the ground in case maybe if they won the election. Because election is not, how they call it, permanent for anybody. Table can change at any time. The, once they are in a position, they see what the past, present, present government is doing. They should learn from there. It's like a football team. Or oh, they score you, you are playing a gala. You play first match, they score you. Then you want to play the final game. You want to, do, you want to see what did you do did before you, are, you, you have been scored first time. So that the second time will not do that mistake anymore. So my, my concern is that once we are ready to vote for them, they are also ready to help the citizen, not me per se, but the citizen. Because our fathers and the mothers are the village. I have a siblings.
this is still the constituency and we are going to have a conversation with someone who uh, has been touted as a record uh, setter in this particular constituency. Uh, he is the only person who has um, won this particular constituency twice consecutively, I mean back to back, and he's looking at getting his third term. Let's get to him to find out how far advanced, you know, campaign have been for him. Honorable, greetings. You're welcome to Esoja, man. Thank you so much. We've seen rivers and beautiful sceneries and all. Yes, Esoja is blessed uh, to have about 140 kilometers of the Volta Lake going through our constituency. And fortunately, it is probably by far the cleanest water body we have in Ghana today. We haven't polluted our water uh, with Galamse or any other thing. And so everybody is excited. To Can you, would you want to highlight some of the things you've, you've, you've done for your people in this particular constituency? I have constructed a number of clinics. The biggest one is at Tosca, New Pomo a very big clinic that I have constructed for them. I have constructed a clinic at Mam Manguase. We are in the process of roofing a new clinic at Abume. I have renovated clinics at Boso, the clinic at Asikuma, uh, clinic at Senche, right behind us here. So my contribution to health, to education, water and sanitation, so many of them, I've constructed modern water closet toilet at Frankadia. I've constructed one at uh, Ganakwe. I am almost complete in the construction of a new toilet for the people of Abume too. I have been able to do more in a soldier mine than two DCs over the last eight years. And there's a challenge that I have thrown, that if anybody thinks otherwise, let them list the things that the district assembly in the past eight years have done and compare that to mine. I am in a contest with somebody who has also had the privilege to serve as a deputy minister for youth and sports, deputy minister for information, currently CEO for the National Youth Authority, and at the same time, board member for the Youth Employment Agency. His, his government is in power. But what I have done in Esu Jamang, he hasn't done a tenth of it. And that is what gives me comfort. Because my campaign message is simple. That, look, even in opposition, I have been able to do so much. Now that my government is coming to power, your best shot is to have me in parliament and I will be able to do more. So going forward, I'm going to continue to pay fees for many of our students in tertiary institutions. I'm going to continue to put many of our youth in apprenticeship. I've done so many of them and I'll continue to do that in my third term. Your opponent is saying that, look, um, he made a comment that he is going to take some of the youth and all to um, outside of the country for them to pursue other careers and all of that. And it looks like some of the youth are buying into it. Don't you think so? Don't you think that message of his will sway voters to his side? Well, I don't think so because we have been spending a lot of time explaining uh, the lies that Pius Ajide is telling them to them. I mean, it's obvious. He was bragging to them that even Australia, that is a very far distance from Ghana, he took people there. And so World Cup is coming uh, this time in America, which is a shorter distance. And so he will send them to, to America. We, we tell them that this is the person who denied that he was not the person who uh, took, who was engaged in that visa fraud, uh, the Australia visa scandal that came up. He denied it earlier, but conveniently today he's boasting with it. We should see who he is. Secondly, there is every indication that President Mahama is winning this election. If President Mahama is president, Pius Ajide will not be in the position to fraudulently take them to any World Cup. If there is anybody who can genuinely assess them, it will be me, Thomas Ampimnyako, under President Mahama's presidency. And um, the most valid question is that the Australian visa scandal that he's even bragging about, how many of the Esojama youth did he send to Australia? Not one, because they could not afford the payment that he was taking before sending them to Australia. And so they should see, and, and trust me, with this message going around, everybody is seeing who he is. And so I, I don't believe that the youth of Esfajama, even though a lot of people would desire to go to America, I don't think that they believe 
that he sincerely means well in those campaign promises. How many percent are you looking at? In fact, I expect that the gap between myself and Pius will be bigger than the gap between myself and the MPP candidate in 2020. Before we end the conversation, what is your last message of peace? Because uh, we understand that tensions are quite high looking at the stakes, you know, in this particular election. Um, when you are campaigning, do you also sell the message of peace to uh, both your party members and then the um, party members of your opposition, you know, the new patriotic party in the constituency? I have made firm commitment and I will repeat the commitment that on my part, I will do everything possible uh, for this election to be peaceful. The people of Esso Jamai know me. They have seen me in the contest in 2016. They saw me in the contest in 2020. They know that I'm not a violent person. They, they know that I'm, I haven't changed and I'm not going to change because I have uh, a certain candidate who have those potentials. So they should, they should believe that on my part, I will ensure that this election is peaceful. And I will encourage the young ones and everybody that let us go out there, vote, and make sure that our votes are counted. But don't, nobody should do anything uh, that will hinder the peace that we have in this constitution. So let me find out, how has the campaign period been in, in this particular constituency? Well, thank you very much, my brother. To the glory of God, I can say that the campaign has been good. The people have accepted our message. They feel the hope that we are selling. Uh, they know that Eso Jaman, the parliamentary seat, needs to be rescued. Uh, I am unimpressed. The good people of Eso Jaman have been unimpressed with the quality of parliamentary, parliamentary representation that we have gotten over the last eight years. And they have called for change. They have asked me to come and serve. And I've responded to the call of the people because the voice of the people is the voice of God. What your reaction to this? Uh, in an interview with your opponent, uh, he mentioned that, look, you are privileged because you've had the opportunity to serve, to, to, to serve as a minister and all of that, you know. You know and, but right. for him, for him, he says that his government is not in power. He is only an MP, but he has been able to do a couple of things that you have not been able to do. Do you have a reaction to that? I think that's very defeatist. It's plainly uninformed, and I'm disappointed that a member of parliament will argue that way. He knows that members of parliament are not looked after in terms of whether their party is in power or not. Does he receive the common fund? The answer is yes. The same common fund he receives is the same common fund that uh, political parties uh, of the ruling party receive. Even independent candidates within our scheme of things, they also receive their common fund. So, I mean, I'm, I'm quite scandalized that even talking to Channel One, an important and uh, media uh, channel like you, uh, he will be petty-minded and say things like that. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed. Because it is not about whether your party is in power or your party is not in power. He is our incumbent member of parliament. He has to speak for us. He is our agent of development. He is our legislator. And he receives every uh, benefit that everybody receives. And I'm not just talking about benefits. I'm also talking about statutory uh, uh, funding. That, that comes to him. And I'm not aware that I've been minister before. You are in the media. Have I been minister before? No, I have not been minister, but he keeps making this same mistake. I've corrected him a million times. I've not been minister. And he keeps saying it. Maybe he wants me to be minister. God willing, in his own time, I probably will be minister one day. But I've not been minister. But this argument is neither here nor there. It's neither here nor there. He has been uh, even the things that we have done in terms of infrastructure. I'm calling for a debate. I've called for a debate many times, and I'm saying that if you want to do a comparison, fair enough, we can do that. Unlike his boss who says that this is an exercise in mediocrity, I am prepared that ever since I became the candidate of the MPP, in less than a year, I have done more than MPM has done 
in eight years as member of parliament. Okay, in, in, in wrapping up, um, does this comment sound familiar? I will take you to Australia for World Cup and all of that. And, and does it sound familiar? There, there is this comments you made that you know was all over the country and all. I want to find out from you now that we are here having this conversation. Are you still standing by that? And uh, is it that people are misinterpreting what you said? What do you have to say? No, it's not people. It's uh, the NDC people led by Ampim Nyaku. There's no message, so they have resorted to insults and name-calling and so on. But it's a promise I made. It's a promise I intend to keep. I'll make it again. I'm saying that, and you know, any time that Ghana goes to play the World Cup, the resources of the state is used to sponsor supporters. We went to Brazil, we took supporters. We went to South Africa, we took supporters. We went to Germany, we went to Qatar, we took supporters. People lobby for their constituents to be involved. And people does not do that. I have made the promise that I will do that. I know how to do it. I know how to do it, I will do it. The people of Esu are also Ghanaians. If they also benefit and they go to America and they support our national team and our national team performs, why, why not? Because they're also Ghanaians, we're also taxpayers. And I'm saying that I will not be a lazy MP. I will not sit in Parliament. I will look for opportunities. I'm saying to you that I'm an agent of development. I'm saying to you that I see myself as a bridge that the people will have to walk on to get to where it is that they want to get to. And I know many of our people who want to travel. They want the exposure. They want to go and study. They want to go and work. They want to go and support their national team. And as member of Parliament, I'd rather that I assist my people to go abroad through the legal and, 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 and safe ways, rather than to allow them to go through Libya and the Sahara Desert, and, and, and we all know the vagaries and the challenges uh, that people face when they apply those routes. I, as member of parliament, I'm prepared to do what other members of parliament who are productive to their people are doing. I'll do that. Talking about the people seeing hope in you, lastly, how many percent are you looking at getting? Well, I know that I'll win, I'll win, I'll win massively. Uh, because um, our message is simple, our message is clear. Our How message many percent? Is, well, uh, we'll win well, we'll win good, we'll win massive. Uh, we are not expecting to get less than fifty-five percent of the of the of the popular vote, and that will be one of the highest margins in our constituency. I asked you opening this question and I'll be asking you the same thing. Are you committed to peace? Looking at how the dynamics in your constituency, are you committed to peace? I am very much so. You speak to anybody in our constituency and they tell you that he is the one who is uh, engaging in the politics of insults and name calling and all kinds of things. You have evidence to that? I have. I mean, the last time he was on a, a campaign platform said quite some printable things. Disgraceful. I can't even say the words that he says on his campaign. To the extent that he has called me a stranger in a Sujaman, that because I'm aware I'm a stranger, and there are many aways in this constituency, and they vote for him, by the way. And then he calls us that we are strangers. But he's the one who has been stoking the fires, he's the one who has been saying all the kinds of unprintable things. Everybody can attest to this. The, Na the National Commission for Civic Education, NCC, invited all political parties so that we can assent to a pact to peace. He refused to sign. The NDC has not signed. The NPP that I lead at the moment, we have committed ourselves to peace by and by signing the peace pact that is sponsored by the NCCE. And so uh, we are committed to peace by conduct, by word of mouth, and by commitment. And and, and I'm, I'm, I'm eager to hear his question uh, in terms of their commitment to, to peace because they have not done that when it matters. From the popular Adomi Bridge, here in the Sojaman constituency. This is where we wrap up on today's episode of the constituency. And be reminded that until 2020, power in terms of the parliamentary seats has been alternating until the incumbent MP broke that record by winning his second term consecutively in the year 2020. And he is seeking to extend that term to a a third term. But a new patriotic party are saying that no, no, that is not going to happen because they are winning this particular election. And listening to electorates, they have also given varying opinions on what is really going to influence their votes in terms of the parliamentary and uh, presidential elections. And some issues they have raised have got to do with their roads, uh, got to do with um, 
prices of foods and prices of spare parts for the drivers and all of that. And so uh, this is where we end today's episode of The Constituency. And thank you so much for watching. My name is Samuel Akom.